What? You got to hit. You got to hit the button to record. I clicked the button. You don't. Okay. You didn't hit it. You clicked it. <laughs> That's good. I think we should have the whole preamble where we're just getting to see each other. I think that should be part of the show. Maybe. I think so. Not not the, I mean, not the naughty bits, but everything else. You do look nice, by the way. Thank Even you. Even with your shirt back on. Thank you. Yeah. That's good stuff. We're going to, um, we're going to talk about, uh, oh, you want to, you want to cut, are we still do the cold open? Is that a thing? I mean, Let's we took a week off. I had no idea what was going to happen when I got back. So. Let's do it. Gene, you may remember the last time we got together, I I was a little frustrated with brokers. You were. You remember that? I remember it well. Do you want to hear? He has notes. He has notes, folks. Yeah, it's just blank paper. Or, she has blank paper. or is it? Okay. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of people who've had problems with brokers. Shocker alert. Spoiler oh. alert. <laughs> um, I got so many emails back more than ever for any newsletter. And it was, uh, it was so much about, they promised the moon. They didn't deliver shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, they said it would happen quickly. I'm on month three. Meanwhile, I'm still paying them, um, all this kind of stuff. And I did hear from some brokers too. Oh, I'm not giving it. I'm, I, I said, Hey, give me, Give me your input. Let me know what you think, and I'll give you equal airtime. I'm not going to say who it is because, yeah, you know that would be a little promotional, and they may play me. And then I hear, "Hey, you said," but then they did, and then I'm the asshole. Well, oh, either way, right? Yeah. I got it. <laughs> I, hey, I've come to terms with it being an asshole. <laughs> it's your job. It's my job, man. Don't do that. Can't do that. Going to get in trouble for that. Um, so anyway, I also had a couple of people show up who said they had a good broker experience okay. and they explained to me kind of how they approached it. So this week's newsletter, which comes out tonight, well, last Tuesday night, cause this comes out on Friday time zones, folks, learn them, uh, <laughs> <laughs> time travel, learn it. but 11, 27 AM call it Carl's useless. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to go through some of what those people shared as how they found good brokers and also some, you know, just looking online, there are definitely brokers out there who can help you, but because the market is so hot right now, you really do have to be careful how you Mm. approach things and how you get started. So anyway, Gene, I thought it'd be fun if we do that game where you guess things, I tell you you're wrong and then tell you the correct answer. What do you think? Sounds like me choosing where we're going for dinner. Okay. <laughs> Charleston. How about that? Uh, um, uh, no? Yes. Okay. Because three of the people that listen are in Charleston. Okay. Ooh. I, I can't back that up. Um, Gene, what do you think is the best way to start your search for a broker? The yellow pages. Not too far off. <laughs> Actually, there are some great directories out there. <laughs> the um, Let me make sure I get this right. The International Business Brokers Association, also known as the IBBA, although I think they missed an opportunity to be the IBBA. I think that would have been a much better, you know, hey, I'm here for you. Marketing, any Branding. kind of Carl's here. Branding. Um, but they do have a directory. And, okay. and the, one of the things that, that hit me was there's so many certifications for brokers but some of them are just you pay and then you can get on, you know, the certification on the website, right. the directory, right. all that stuff. This International Business Brokers Association, they actually have a certified business intermediary certification, mm. which is a pain in the ass to get. Okay. It takes a lot of work. I think it costs a little bit of money. And because of that, to me, it feels like a valid certification to want. Yeah, absolutely. If somebody who shows up that's just fly by night. They're not going to take the time to right. do it. Right. Right. And they're already seeing success 
in in their approach. So why would they do something else? Mm -hmm. um, so that to me felt pretty good. The other thing, we, if you look at certifications and associations, I mean, you could look at the bureau and say, okay, somebody's part of the bureau, so they're they're a valid uh, shop, they're a valid resource. I want to work with them. It's the same thing. There, there are other associations out there for these brokers that do promote good ethics and they do that mm -hmm. sort of thing. You still have to check them out, but I think it's a little check in the, in the right box there. If they're a part of a group that is trying to make it a good community um, and a good resource for everybody. And then also referrals. I think that's the other one. If you know somebody who's been through it, either find out from them who to talk to or who not to talk to. Right. right? That's always good. That's for like, yeah, just about anything. Gene, you ready for your next one? You did pretty good. I, I'm going to say you're one for one, even though you're being snarky with the yellow pages and what if, have people listening don't know what the hell that means. <laughs> what do I get if I win? You see, kids, back in the day. We had paper. We had paper. We had big ass books of every business in your location, except half of them had gone out of business by the time the book got delivered. And you couldn't get them to stop delivering the damn book. So recycling was having a heyday yep. uh, when it was not even in existence. So, yet. so are all those strong guys that would rip them in half. Oh, man, that was amazing, right? It was a good pastime. Yeah, it hurts your hands, though. I, I couldn't do more than two at a time. I always use my um, teeth. <laughs> all right. So how do you think is the best way to prepare to select a broker? Do you need to think about like buying a house or, or selling your house, right? It's kind of a similar thing. Like if you're asking somebody to come sell your company with you or for you, what do you think you need to be prepared with when they show up? Uh, wow. This, that could be a lot of stuff. I think at the very least, you need to have your your old P&Ls ready. Your accounting, uh -huh. that side of your house. Needs to be. I see you're <laughs> going to start throwing letters at me. I got lots of letters, pal. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You got to have your QuickBooks up to date, bro. Yeah. And you know what, though? I, th I think there's something really smart about that. Like a great broker is going to help you get all of your paperwork in order. And it's almost like <laughs> I've told people before, it's almost like if you clean up your house before you have a cleaning service come over. <laughs> right. Oh, I don't want to see that I left this out. Right. Or even even your hotel room when they're coming in to freshen up your room and you make sure that you rearrange your toiletries or whatever. Um, I think. I think there's something to this, though, in making sure that you have a good handle right, on what, on what you have to sell. Yeah, right. And I would even go so far as to say, maybe get a valuation from a third party before you talk to a broker. Obviously, a broker's a third party, blah, blah, blah. But, but like my bank offers free valuations. Now, obviously, they're not going to understand the, the intricacies of a digital shop. No. But if it's free, I mean, I, I'm just, if, if there's somebody else that you can go to, maybe it's sure. your CFO, maybe it's somebody like that that understands those formulas, just so you have a baseline of understanding before some broker can give you an anchor, right? And then we, we've all studied this. Our brains, as soon as we see a number, even if it's not related to what we're deciding, it can influence us up or down. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that we establish that anchor before we get in a conversation with a broker, if possible. Yeah, and it seems like, I mean, if you follow the analogy here, like if you're getting ready for another job and you're helping someone like make their resume look better, it seems like a broker is going to do some of that work for your business. A good one, right? Right, it, right. And that leads us into the, the second thing. So I think the first thing, look at associations, look at certifications, find referrals, do all that sort of stuff before you contact a broker. Mm -hmm. But the second thing is once you contact them, and I do think you should be prepared. You should have your own information before you meet with them. Right. What is their process? Mm -hmm. What is it going to look like? Do they start by telling you how quickly they can get you listed? Or they start by asking you questions about your business and what makes you a special little snowflake, right? Because right. it's just like us. If, if we're bringing somebody into our shop and we want to work with them, we don't start by telling them, hey, we're going to get this up for you in three weeks and it's only going to cost $5,000. Mm -hmm. We start by saying, well, tell me more about your business and the goals. Like, what are you trying to accomplish mm -hmm. here? I think it's the same thing for a great broker. 
they should explain their process, yes, but they should show their process, which to me mm -hmm. would include asking about you. You know what? Is it important that you sell this quickly or that you maximize your return? Like these are the types of things I would want somebody to ask me because quite frankly, I may not have thought of it, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Now, I'm talking now so that you can... You can <laughs> Absolutely. I mean... I mean, those are two different approaches, whether it's fast or to get the most out of it, you know? Yeah. And yeah. And just like, um, just like in anything, if, yeah, like you're saying, if like take a, take a contractor who's going to work on your kitchen, if they're just like, the first thing they say is like, whatever you want, I'll have it done by Tuesday. Mm -hmm. like, you know, that's not going to be the case. Yeah. Well, and, and the other thing I think is really important is when they talk to you it, and again, for everybody listening to this, reading the newsletter, Think about it as if you were the broker and you were getting ready to help somebody else sell their shop. What would you want to ask them so that you could know you were doing a great job? Mm -hmm. Because that's what you want, a broker who wants to do a great job for you, right? So I think part of that also is going to be sharing with them what are the potential hurdles that you're going to have to overcome. Mm -hmm. You know, not, not to make it just a rosy picture where everybody walks away with millions of dollars, but to say, hey, there right. is some work you're going to have to do. We're going to have to be able to explain your pipeline. We're going to have to be able to show the different types of revenue that you have coming in, right? Well, it brings up a question that I was, I didn't know if this might be later or, or what, or if we were leading to it, but like, I know a lot of people, a lot of my peers, uh, and even myself to a certain degree, I don't have a lot of systems, right? Like when you have a lot of employees or a lot of team members, there's a lot of processes and systems that you have literally written down. Um, does that come into play any, in some of the people you've, you've researched, like, does the broker do some coaching in that aspect of like, Hey, if you really want to sell this, you need to have these things in place so that you can communicate. This is how shit gets done. I think so. I, I think where it becomes a, a little bit, um, tricky is you need to have had those things in place for a few years. Right. I mean, I wouldn't buy a company that didn't have that stuff in place, you know, right. I'd be I like, mean, Wait, I'm I'm gonna buy a giant problem, you know. If you go in and and they're sharing like, hey, this is amazing revenue that we've made, but nobody's talking about EBITDA, nobody's talking about profit, nobody's talking about anything like that. It's like, hey, I can tell you, I've been in some companies that have made great revenue, and uh -huh. I still wasn't sure about my mortgage. Yeah, right. Yeah, you or could, you don't know, like, how the hell are we making money? You know, or or yeah. how are we not making? Like, you don't know what's going on. Where's the money coming from? Where's the profit coming from? Like, right. things like that. So I, I think you're right. It's I'll go, again, that gets to actually what I'm going to call our third point. What up? They've got to understand the industry. They have to have relevant selling history. If you find a broker who has sold a bunch of businesses, but they've only sold one or two digital shops. Yeah. Right. And so to your point with that, they wouldn't know if you were doing a, a great job or a bad job. Now, they, they'll right. be able to look at the basic metrics and see if you're sustainable or healthy, but... I also want somebody to talk to me about the culture of the company and how it's going to change. Because right. if you're thinking about it, let's <laughs> say you're, you're selling a, a auto parts dealership, right? Like you've got right. six auto parts stores. Are they going to talk about the culture? Yeah. Probably not. They're going to talk about issue. They're going to talk about staffing and issues with turnover and things yep. like that. Whereas we're going to talk about we've worked so hard to establish this culture. We mm -hmm. know it's going to change. We just want it to change on purpose. We mm -hmm. want we want there to be a process for our people. A fly by night broker, somebody who's just in it as a numbers game, they are not going to take the time mm -mm. To, to hold your hand. Right? They're not going like to. Right. It's like analogy might be selling a website based on how many pages it is. <laughs> right. No, you know, I, like, like a pricing a website project based on how many pages it's going to be. You're like, which, well, if you didn't know anything. Right. I mean, Google's very expensive because it's millions of pages. You yeah. Know, that, that's or, why. Or even not, not understanding if it's a transactional site or informational right. site right. or web three, <laughs> um, whatever it might be. Speaking of which, that's a hot topic in the community right now. Oh, and as yeah. soon as I know anything about it, that I can back up. We'll, we'll get on that. Um, so I, I think relevant selling history is important. And I think you need to ask for references right up front, but I think there's a special way to ask for them. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if you ask for references, you're going to get sent references and which references are they going to send? 
the ones the that are super happy. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, I mean, I play this role for a lot of shops in the Bureau when they're trying to find out something, but they don't want to reveal that they're the ones asking. So I'll play that intermediary role, hmm. right? But I think when you start looking at relevant selling history and you want to talk to references, the thing you should ask first is how many shops have you sold in the last 12 to 24 months, right? Hmm. And then when they tell you that number, ask for a list of the shops and the prices, like whatever they can share transparently, right? Whatever they have the rights to share. Now, I don't I don't know enough to know if these are ever publicly listed. I know that a lot of people share Probably it. Probably not. Only, yeah. but, but the reason I say that is because then you can cherry pick which ones are like you, mm -hmm. right? Are you more project-based? Are you more in a niche service? Are you, wh whatever it might be, right. can you find somebody that's like you? Mm -hmm. um, then you can ask them right? You don't even have to, I mean, yeah. Okay. So if it was 12 months or 24 months ago, you're going to have to have some sort of contact, but I'm sure on LinkedIn, you could find who used to own it, right? They're probably right. Still listed, but I think this is important. Don't just ask for references, make sure that they're applicable to you and your situation. And that, that was one of the amazing notes that I got from somebody who said that they had to bail twice on the broker that they had hired. And this is another thing to understand. Some of those broker agreements, which which I'll say our friends at Matchstick has, have looked at one and they said that they are not put together very well. Like you, you can tell that they're, and I don't mean that they're slated or, or they're weighted just to one side. I mean that they're just not very professional, mm. right? Um, mm. One of, one of the things, though, that, that this person said was the third time they followed that approach where they said, I want to see shops like me. I want to talk to shops like me and I want to understand what that was. And that third broker actually embraced it. Oh, wow. Right? But here's the other thing. You need to understand how dedicated is that broker, hmm. right? Are you important to them or not? Because the other question you need to ask is how many current businesses are you selling? Right. Because if they're selling 45 right now, right, they're not you, good. Know, you know, it's like a two person operation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then they're just, they're just throwing you out there to see what happens. Right. Yeah. And their, their reach and involvement in your industry is probably not that good. Right. Because I mean, even if those were all web shops, then you have to ask yourself, how long have you been doing this? That's why I think the 24 month range is really important. How many shops have you sold in the last 24 months? Because 24 months ago, this wasn't a thing, mm -hmm. right? Now with COVID, maybe you have to, you have to give them 2019, like show me what you did in 2019 mm -hmm. um, because it was such a tumultuous situation. I can't spell that word, but I can't say it. Um, so I like to put it on my food. <laughs> I think it's important mm -hmm. underneath my shirt. I think it's not illegal yet. Tumultuous. Tumultuous. I can't say it anymore. Like Velocicoaster. Ooh, I said it. Um, so getting back to it, I think the other important thing is to understand their valuation method. Mm. Is it in sync with other things that we've heard? Yeah. Right. And I'll be honest, I, I, I've been, I've sat through probably 10 presentations on valuation methods. I still don't understand. God it's like, you. I know. Well, hey, it's my job. Signed up for it. Oof. But I think it's really important to understand how they came up with the number they came up with and how are they going to stand behind it? Mm -hmm. Because that's the other thing. If they show up and just give you a number and say, <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is what we're going for. They price you too low and it moves quick. It hurts you and them. They price it too high and it doesn't move. It hurts you and them. Right. So a great broker isn't going to play this numbers game where they're just trying to shuffle people through, which is what I think you see a ton of right now. Hmm. Um, and some people are doing it much better than others in terms of the attracting the right shops, beating them down over time so that they'll take less money than they think they're worth. Hmm just to get it over with. And you can't give up. We said that in the last uh, episode, it's like, you cannot get, if you were part of this, you have to know when to bail. Um, and I mentioned this earlier. I don't know that I went all the way through, but sometimes in your agreements with them, you can't hire another broker for a certain amount of time. Ooh, make sure in that agreement that you get that son of a bitch struck out. Yeah, that's rough. 
Like, why would you say that? Yeah. I mean, you can say that I can't have two employed at the same time. Well, that, that. that's counterproductive. Yes. Yeah, I'm fine with that. But but if you tell me that for a year after engaging you, I can't yeah. talk to a broker. No. Nah. That just that just mm -hmm. smells of trapping me. Yeah. So that you can try to uh, to get through it. But again, with the valuation, not only asking how they got there, but it gets back to that understanding: Have they done this for other people using that same valuation method? And what was the average percentage of that valuation that they got for the individual? Hmm. Right? Are you are you talking with somebody who's normally getting ninety to ninety five percent of what they say, or one hundred and five, or are they dead on? Or are they getting around sixty five to seventy percent of what mm. they say? Because they want you to to hear those magical words of mm -hmm. you're going to make money, right? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, you have to remember that they're a salesman. Oh yeah, I mean they're selling you right they now. They are. <laughs> They are actually, my phone has not stopped ringing since we've started this and uh, they just keep so selling me. How, how big of a thing is this, man? How big of it? You mean in terms of in the industry? Yeah. Approximately 7.2%. No, I don't know. Um, it is something that everybody's talking about. It is by everybody. I mean, even if you're not thinking about selling your shop, you're hearing about it. Right. Because when somebody does have it happen, it's news and it's going to travel. <laughs> right. Cause it's all I've like never seen. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I know personally of about a dozen shops that are looking to sell. Hmm. Um, and that's in the bureau community. So that that's within the membership base. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, we're about a thousand. So it's like, doesn't sound like a large number. Well, actually, if you look at the number of shops, there are about 450. 50 or 500 shops, I think represented, um, hmm. so it's a couple of percent, right? Yeah, Maybe 4% yeah, yeah. that are actively engaged in it. Hmm. But in terms of those that are thinking about it, my gut feels like it, it's up in the 20% range. Probably. Right. I mean, there are a lot of people who've been beat up. They've, they, it's been a rough couple of years, even though they're making a lot of money, it's so hard to create the work. Mm -hmm. Um, and if somebody shows up and says, Hey, I got 5 million for you. You just need to sign here and I'll take care of it. And then suddenly it becomes one and a half million. Right. Because that story was one that came through. That um, seems somebody yeah. decided against it. But another big thing, Gene, let's say that you go through and you sign up with the broker. Now what? Hmm. What do you think is something super important to know? about once you sign that paperwork. It's obvious. I don't know Be, because I wrote it. I don't Sorry. know if it's obvious. <laughs> I, <laughs> What's the plan? Oh, right. What are you going to do now? Right? And I'm I, not kind making... of, I kind of figured you'd learn that before you signed on. You will. Yeah. Okay. So Gene, let's rewind. You are correct, sir. That's not that how it works. Would definitely be a better plan. Before, oh. in fact, all of this really is kind of before you sign on, right? Okay. I think. But yeah, what's what's their approach going to be to creating awareness and selling your company? Yeah, because I'll tell you that there are some companies out there that they are just going to throw you on a mailing list. They are going to float you in front of every person who said they're interested in anything. There's no slicing and dicing. So let me ask you about this, like um. It's funny that I didn't think about this until just now, but we have a a client of ours that was approached um, to be bought, mm -hmm. like a assets and, and talent thing, um, and they signed they signed on with a broker to help make it work. And the mm -hmm. broker did that. The broker like put them on some list, and then the 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 buyer was like, "No, fuck you." Cause they were like, why, you know, whatever. So I wonder if that, like, that's part of that knowing what the hell the plan is. Cause it's like, you might be in an industry or you might be working and it could hurt you in your, as far as what your clients working with you and your team, know that I'm going to, yeah. Like, how do you do that and keep it all quiet? That's very important. If, if that's a thing. Um, well, so interestingly, this was something, something I found out on these giant lists, they, they get sent out. 
generally they don't say who the companies are, right? But you can figure that out. Well, mm, I don't know. There's so many no? of them. Okay. It's almost like looking at a school of fish and figuring out which one's Dory, right? It, it's like it's mm -hmm. like there's so many that are out there that are all trying to accomplish the same thing. But um, one of the interesting things, I'm going to get part of this story wrong, but on one of the main broker's websites, they were using JPEGs that had something to do with the companies, right? It wasn't a logo. It wasn't a photo. I, I really have to go back and, and look and see what it was. But the JPEGs were named the company name. Oh. <laughs> so, so they basically went out there trying not to share who it was. And I really, I got to figure out what, what you would put on there that would have the J, the name, but it, it was a big deal. Like I had a couple of people tell me about it to the point where these people don't know each other, but they both knew about this. And let and, me say before, before, if you're listening to this and before you think what, no one's going to do that or it's not a big deal. I run count conferences for years and I had, uh, you know, I was just editing the images really fast. Right. And yeah. I'm like, using the same image because it's the right size. And I'm just dropping other JPEGs on top of it and saving it out, saving it out. And the naming, like I had somebody's logo name something that wasn't like their name of their company. And they got pissed. They were like, this image reference is not the name of my company or whatever. And they were like, yeah. give me some argument about SEO or whatever. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, Dude, it's just, <laughs> but I mean, it's important because one, it was important because it was their logo, yeah. but also like it had the wrong name on it. Um, if yeah, it could be it. That kind so of whatever, shit. whatever the graphic was, that kind of shit can be a outed, problem. Woo. It added who was for sale, but but I think this gets back or, to or like you just follow where the image is and it's in a directory that's got everyone else's shit in there, oh, there and you can you just go. see it. Yeah. You're like, well, what about all this stuff? I used to actually do that for conferences. I'd look at the image for the sponsor logo and then try to find the file and then see like all the other sponsors to see who do I should remember, call. Do you remember <laughs> the old days of just going JPEG one refresh JPEG yeah, two. Yeah. Refresh, yeah, yeah. JPEG refresh. <laughs> I won't say what I was looking at, oh. but let's just say you naughty. No, it gene. I am. I'm embarrassed for you. <laughs> that's where your brain would go. That doesn't embarrass me. So, so getting back to this approach, like what's the sales plan? Um, I think you have to ask yourself, are they going to find a buyer who cares about our shop? Um, is it an eHarmony approach or is it a shotgun approach where they are just going to throw it out there and see what happens? And you can tell by looking. You don't have to uh, actually ask them. You can. It'd be interesting to see what they say, but sign up like you want to buy a shop. Mm. Right? Get somebody else to do it, but, but secret shop them. <laughs> To see what happens. I will tell you, I was supposed to be on that one phone call, canceled five minutes ahead of time, never rescheduled. And I get their emails daily showing me all the new shops that are available and they have no idea who I am. Mm -hmm. I have never said I'm buying a shop. I've never said what I'm looking at. And yet if you go with them, I'm the person that they're sharing it with. It makes no mm. sense um, unless mm. they think that somehow because I'm connected to a lot of shops, I'm going to say, hey, this looks like a great well, deal. Maybe they know who you are. Yeah. But it, but it doesn't say anything about what makes the shop special. It says their industry. It says the numbers. This right. is purely if somebody wanted an investment, right? And th that's part of why this is so hot right now. Maybe that's what they're thinking. A yeah. lot of money's come out of the market. People aren't trusting the stock mm -hmm. market right now. Right. So they're investing in shops and companies. That so buy a web design shop. That's brilliant. <laughs> well, no. But the I thing know, is, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. if they just see the numbers. Right. And your vertical is higher ed mm -hmm. or healthcare or government, mm -hmm. right? Or e com of any kind. Or space travel. You're seeing this like huge increase right. in revenue. And that's people want to put their money somewhere where it's going to make money. And, and yeah. that makes sense. But if, if you're just buying a car because it goes a certain speed and gets a certain gas mileage and will seat a certain number of folks, could be a Honda Accord or it could be a Ferrari, right? It's it's like you have no idea. You can't fit for right. a Ferrari. I don't know what I'm thinking. No, you could. You could. Well, you could. It's gonna get comfortable. Yeah. You have to chop, you'd have to chop them up. <laughs> you'd have to chop them up. Oh my god. <laughs> um. No. Gene, what do you last last thing? 
Last thing to decide if you're going to hire a broker. Let's say you've gone through the other stuff, right? You They're certified that you think they're a part of an association. Somebody told you they were great. Um, you like the way they approached talking to you and understanding more about your business. Their valuation methods seemed good. They had good contacts, all this sort of thing. You're right down to the wire. You're thinking about it. What would make you say no? What would make me say no? Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. The smarminess of the guy? I don't know. I don't know where we're going. Yes. No, you're hitting her. I hate salespeople. If like, you don't like, the, like, like them. The, the quintessential like caricature of a salesperson. That drives me crazy. You've spent 10, 15, 20 years, even five years building this thing that has value, your web shop. And now you're going to trust somebody to sell it that you don't like? Yeah. No, you've got to be able to trust them. You've got to feel good that they are going to be out there representing you properly. If you have any sense that this person is not above board, that it just doesn't feel right, you're signing up with them for a long time, potentially, mm -hmm. to try to do this correctly for you. Yeah. Now, now, I'll say there may be people that you don't like because they're smarmy, which is a great word, right? Swarmy would be more bees, but smarmy would be, you swarmy, know. Swarmy might work for you in your favor. Some jackhole. I'm bringing that back, by the way. It's one of my favorite cuss words that I think I made up. What a jackhole. Anyway, when you get to that point, you can still trust somebody that you don't want to have a beer with. I'm not saying that it has right. to be your best friend. Right. I'm not saying it has to be somebody that looks like you or right. comes from your background or anything like that. I'm saying it needs to be somebody that when you sign that piece of paper, you feel like this person has my best interest and they want to see me, you know, win. Yeah, they, yeah. they have my best interest at heart. They want to see me win. You don't have to like the person. Right. But it would help. Yeah. So, so you're talking about those intangible things. I mean, I would, I would want to make sure they were like a pro, like they sit that pro vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Without yeah, a doubt. That, that I know they're going to be like sending those follow up emails and closing things out with people. And, yeah. you know, it's not going to just be sloppy uh, salesmanship, you know. Um, no, that's it. When it goes to the smarmy, that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like that, yeah. like that Better Call Saul type of sales <laughs> guy. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't want to work I with do. that guy. I'd want, I'd want the, you know, the, the Wolf of Wall Street dude, you know, if I can get it done. So I, I, got, I got a few one offs here, Gene. Let's do them. They're one-offs because I thought of them after I'd already written it, and there was no room <laughs> on the paper. I'm out of numbers. So even though you were late. I'm sorry. And I would have had enough time because you had planned, Carl needs more time to prepare. I'll tell him I'm running late. Uh, um, but then my neighbor came over, and mm. uh, it's really difficult mm. to be liked by all. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> um, transparency around how they're compensated <laughs> I think is really important. Yeah. If they are if they are getting compensated based on the buyer, mm -hmm. right, versus the seller, like all of this makes a huge difference. Just well, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna beat you down. Exactly. Do they are they more interested in a placement fee? Because some people are just getting a fee for the placement, which can be a percentage, right? Um, but what is that percentage? Like some people, I've heard that five to 10% is kind of in the realm of normal. Hmm. Okay. That seems um, low. That seems I'm sorry. low to me. Sorry. We're going to have to, we're going to have to revise this. I'm going to have to go oh. back. I think, I think it was two, it two to 5% is more in the normal. Five to 10% is where it starts to get a little bit out of control. Okay. Um, because if you're selling something for a million dollars and somebody gets a hundred thousand of that, that's like, I mean, it depends, right? I guess everything's up in the air. Actually, yeah. just delete everything I've just said. Because <laughs> now I have no confidence in myself and I'm trying to talk about numbers and I'm a goddamn theater major. Um, so transparency around how they're compensated. But but just talk, that, that's a great point that with all the stuff you just said is that it's, as far as our industry is concerned, this is this is fairly new, right? And it's all kind of malleable, right? It's not like an older older types of businesses like you know that get sold a lot more commonly there's probably yeah. industry standards set 
among the brokers that this is how we do these things and this type of thing. When it that's comes great. to ours, it's, they're probably all like, we don't know. Well, I mean, that's, I think we forget that we hold the power. Mm. Without us offering shops to sell, they have nothing, right? With, right. uh, without us offering to buy those shops, which a lot of times it's other shops buying shops, right? Right. They don't. They have nothing, and so that's, honestly, that's all I've ever heard of is another shop acquiring, you know, clients or 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 employees or whatever organizational culture, whatever. That's all it's, I've ever it's heard. Outside of. of it now, I mean, sometimes it's internal. So it's like some big corporation that knows they need a certain talent set or a certain expertise. And, and they want to bring them in. Sometimes it is somebody who's just wanting to run a shop and right. they ended up leaving whatever else they had. Um, but, but a couple, eh, I'm just going to say one last thing. Mm -hmm. One last thing. I'm not going to say a couple, Gene. One last thing. Be sure and shop. Don't just go with the broker that shows mm -hmm. up. Make sure you're paying attention. And when you shop, compare how they're compensated with how the other people say they're compensated. Compare their plan for you. Like how they're going to market you compared to how others market you. And then get a gauge on their dedication, right? Mm. Are they just there in the moment and then you call them the next day and you don't hear from them for four days? Because that's going to happen once you're trying to sell as well. And if you have some great idea, and I'll, I'll be honest, there are a lot of people where this is a part-time hustle right now. They saw there was an opportunity mm. they knew enough people. So make sure you understand that. How dedicated are they, mm. not just to their craft, because the ones that are great, I would say it is a craft. It is eHarmony, right? They are, they are matching mm -hmm. you up. But how dedicated are they to you? I believe that. You know, do they, are they going to tell you? that these things look a little suspect and you need to tighten it up? Or are they going to tell you they'll have you listed tomorrow? Mm -hmm. You know, you need somebody on your side who doesn't just want to get you through the door. They want to make sure that, that you're set for whatever it is you need to get out of this transaction. Well, it sounds like that old, like in our industry, you got the cheap, fast and good. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds like the same sort of uh, three point pyramid kind of kind of holds here yeah. too. Like, uh, that explains so much that you you saw it as cheap, fast, and good. <laughs> right? What do you see? We saw we saw it as less expensive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Timely manner. <laughs> and amazing. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. So. Well. Gene, whatever. Should we sell the podcast? Should we contact a broker? Cheap and fast. Here, this would be fun. What if we set up a bogus agency to sell it? Oh, to sell it, and just see if we make it through some of the the processes for some of these brokers who are just looking to list quick. That would be amazing. You know, it, it actually would pay homage to my dad, who he was a child psychologist. And there was a time where um, they were no longer requiring therapists to be licensed, much like it is today. Yeah. But psychologists didn't have to be licensed. So he he got a gerbil. He bought a gerbil and put together credentials for the gerbil, and it got approved. And that became this big national write-up in uh, like That's Psychology funny. Today or the That's American Psychological funny. Association, where it's like, yeah, so – Unless you really want Herbert to be your therapist, <laughs> you should if probably you have to on them carrots and lettuce. Then, uh, yeah, you need to figure it out. <laughs> That's but awesome. That would be fun. Yeah. Hey, hey, if anybody's interested in us doing that, like reach <laughs> out. And another thing, I just want to say really quickly, Gene, if you're thinking about selling your shop, make sure you got your operations together. You know how you do that? You hire Parallax. Hire Parallax. That's hire Parallax. They're keeping this show on the air, folks. <laughs> Are they? Oh, my God. I don't know. <laughs> All right, Gene Dean. I was going to say hire Parallax, but most importantly, join the Bureau. Oh, shit. Join the Bureau. Yes, please. Because <laughs> Carl needs all the help he can get. Oh, my God. I need so much help. And I'll help <laughs> you sell your shop. I'll get it sold tomorrow for he half will. what I told you. For a million dollars. Yes. He'll do it.
<laughs> I can't see like this in the jungle, Gene.